my first episode here trying to uh, go through my rod building stuff and mainly just this first time around going to go through and show you what tools I used and what works for me and what doesn't. So right here we have the the hand wrapper it comes with the two two stands and it came with this um, threaded bolt for the spools but you see that I have I am not currently using that I added two new ones at either side here uh, for me that's easier because when I would use this the the thread would get wrapped around it and half the time it would give me more issues than it actually had helped um, and I also don't have the the normal tension rod that comes with it because it broke off so I just switched that out with a piece of uh, rigging wire that I normally use for saltwater fishing for bluefish and stuff and just bend it up so you can thread it through there and that seems to work pretty good um, also have the, the normal wing nuts but also have an additional nut on top of it to help it get stay tight because a lot of the times it'll still work itself loose as you're going through um, and then some of the some of the tools that I use on a normal basis um, some of the best one of the best things I got is this little packet that you would get from mud hole uh, it's a starter kit it's got the little scissors that are really razor blades and you have the plastic burnishing tool and the pick. The pick comes in really handy when you're doing wraps and if you somehow accidentally overlap one of the threads you can pull it back with that fairly easily. Um, also use a, uh, a china marker. Uh, some people don't think it's a good idea. Um, it works fine for me because I just normally wipe off whatever excess china markers left on the on the thing here on the on the blank so you're going through and you're just wrapping along and so you can just wrap it I'm just showing as a test here just because and so you do your little wrap and you start wrapping it and you just wipe it off with your fingernail and that usually gets rid of any residue that you might have to worry about uh, some people don't like using the china marker they'll use paint or a sharpie um, most of my rod blanks I use are, are black so a sharpie usually doesn't help very much um, but hey it's whatever people like to use um, also have some files you get from Home Depot you know cheap little set I uh, usually use these for sanding down or filing down the, uh, the guides there's a lot of the time the guide feet uh, guide feet are uh, are too thick and it'll give you issues when you go to wrap them. Um, I also have, let's see, so oh, there's one of the, another almost must have is, is about alcohol burner. Um, this will help you get any bubbles out of your finish that you have or any CP that you have. Um, if you don't know what CP is, that's color preserver. That is used to help you know, preserve the color of your thread, whatever thread you use. Um, and I usually use the, the Pro Seal stuff. Uh, it works out pretty good. And um, as as long as you let it dry, usually at uh, 24 hours, and then you can apply your finish after the fact. Um, and I, I usually use a, a two-part finish. Uh, it's the Pro Coat stuff. Uh, just do one part to one part and mix it up. Uh, I usually mix it up in a just, you know, just a little plastic cup with a popsicle stick. Uh, I normally just stir it around until uh, the until the, f the fluid is clear. Um, and then after that, I normally just take a, a piece of aluminum foil, bend it up into like a little, uh, just, just bend it up and let it sit there for a while. So it usually that's most of the bubbles dissipate and then you can actually apply your finish. Um, now, as far as thread goes, you usually just stick to the regular rod, rod thread. Um, so when you have the regular Pro Wrap or you have the metallic, I also use some Fish Hawk stuff. That's, that's pretty decent as well. 
Um, you see that my metallic is size D. Uh, most of my uh, thread is actually size A. When you're first starting out, size D is, is pretty good for you because you can see it better. Uh, but in order to get the depth of the wraps and such, a uh, size A will work out much better usually in the long run. Um, also, there is some conflicting uh, opinions on using sewing thread. Um, I'll use sewing thread from time to time just on my decorative wraps because you don't really have to worry about strength. But also with the decorative wraps, um, when you're applying the the finish, you have to be wary of any um, fuzzies, I guess you can call them, that you can um, burn off with your alcohol burner to uh, avoid any issues there. Um, but like I said, I don't actually put it on the guide wraps, so it's not a concern of strength or issues with that. Um, and then also you have marbling. Um, marbling is, you, you take the epoxy and then you add pigments to it. So you have this uh, CRB or Custom Rod Builder pigments. Uh, those work out great. These are just, um, see it's a powder type substance. You mix that in with your, with your epoxy when you have it set up and then you apply that to your rod and you'll have a splash of color. And then when you have that on there, you can use toothpicks to string it out and make any swirls or anything like that that you like. But also a, a cheaper option that is actually very simple and it gives you the same effect as the testers model paint. Um, if you let it settle out, all the pigments go to the bottom and you can just use a toothpick or whatever and extract it from the, from the little bottles. Uh, that's all pretty tight, but you get the idea. And then um, when adding grips and reel seats, you stick with the, I, I, again, pro paste stuff. Uh, two parts, one to one, and you're good to go. Um, let's see. So, in term, when you have a a cork grip, uh, you actually want to seal it to make sure that it doesn't have any impurities or anything like that. And then uh, use the cork seal. Uh, you only use one one pass on it. If you put more than one pass, more than likely it's going to flake off and give you issues down the road. Uh, what I usually use to apply that, you know, just a little foam, foam brush you get at Home Depot or whatever, you know, like 50 cents. And uh, that works out pretty good for me as well. Now, when you're, if you, for instance, you have a new blank that isn't finished, or if you have an old blank and you want to take off all the old epoxy and all the old thread, and then you sand it down you know, with your uh, just generic sandpaper. Um, the highest you want to go is probably like a 250 grit. Um, you can go with the very fine stuff, the 800 or 1300, but that's not really going to do much when you're working with this much uh, stuff on here. So 250 will be good. And then you can use um, the permagloss. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that I have this in the bag because um, it is some really nasty stuff. Uh, highly highly uh, toxic don't ever use it indoors because you'll get very lightheaded very quickly when you use this outside it's still going to get lightheaded but it gives an awesome finish on the rod and it'll keep it it'll keep it good for quite a long time um, okay so now another other things that I use are the reamers which will be used for the different um, grips so we have the um, this is a small one, usually for the fresh water rods and the ultralights and such. And then you have the big one, which is usually used for my saltwater builds. Um, this, this is, unless you're building bigger rods, you don't really use any, anything this big. And then you'd be fine with the small, and I don't have the medium, but um, what I normally do is I remount with the small one, and then I'll just use, this is a straight one, straight reamer. Um, there's no taper to it like the the extreme reamers there, but this does the job. And nah, still got stuff on there. But, uh, and also for backups, I got some stuff off of Amazon. You know, just the 
generic tip tops. You know, it comes in various sizes. And then I did the same thing with single foot guides. Um, I didn't do anything like that for my double foot guides. I actually get that stuff, you know, again from Mudhole. Uh, here's a, a casting set that I'm going to be putting on. Uh, this is uh, the Virtus, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, so that's going to go on one of my saltwater builds. So that's going to be my first casting build. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and one thing I recently got, but haven't gotten a chance to use yet, are uh, some little magnif magnifying glasses. It uh, has a little light on it. Uh, it seems pretty good. Like I said, I haven't used it yet. Uh, you, they usually they come with you know just a normal normal glass holders, but I put that on there just which it comes with, so you're good to go with that as well. Um, okay, another thing, alcohol. Clean up, thinning out your uh, epoxy or whatever you need to do. And it's another thing that comes in very handy. Also use just little hair ties that I cut in half, and these are used mainly for uh, putting on guides on the rods before you actually start to wrap them. When uh, I'm about to wrap them, I then take those off and I just use some masking tape and just cut it a little bit and then just wrap the guide on there to keep it in place. Uh, some people like to put glue. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the glue because when you put the glue on, it does not come off very easily. And that'll give you problems if your guides aren't lined up correctly. Um, like I said, I'm just going through this. This is my first one, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, I've been doing this for a couple of years, and some things I'm getting better at, and some things I still suck pretty bad at, too. So uh, hopefully you'll stick along for the journey, and we'll see how my ride progression goes. Um, and then in the next one, I'll show you some of the things that I've done and show you what I think is good and what I know is, is definitely not good. So we'll see how that pans out and we'll go from there. All right, thanks for watching and hopefully you'll watch the next one. All right, bye.